And if you've watched the mainstream media over the past 24 hours, you'd think it is an inevitability that Boris Johnson will be ejected as PM and his party gate misdemeanor is so great that we simply cannot countenance his survival. But is that really what the public wants? So tonight I'm posing this question to you. Would forcing Boris out of office be bad for Britain? Send in your thoughts to dan at gbnews.uk, tweet at gbnews, and we've got our poll running there too. But to help you make up your mind and going head to head on this tonight, Johnson's former advisor, Colvert Ranger, the broadcaster and author, Nina Mishkov, and the PM's former biographer, Tom Bauer. It's great to have all of you here. Colvert, let me start with you, given you previously worked for the current PM. Do you think it would be bad for the UK if he were forced out of office? Yes, I do, Dan, and good evening to your viewers. I think, look, at this moment, the country needs leadership. It needs stable leadership. It needs continuity. We've got an economic crisis of living. We've got a health pandemic that we're still dealing with. And we've got an international war that we really need to support and get our our unity behind and support the Ukrainians in what's going on. The prime minister is leading on all fronts and doing a good job. So removing him at this point or even consider that uh, seems to me like, a, a, as I think has been said, an act of self-harm for the country and for the best, in, not in the best interests of the British people. I mean, Nina Mishkov, we are in the middle of a cost of living crisis. We are in the midst of a war in Europe. We're coming out of the pandemic recovery. Surely a Tory leadership contest at the moment, which would involve many cabinet ministers and really important positions, would be disastrous for the country. No, it wouldn't. It was disastrous when Boris Johnson was voted in. Uh, in 2019. Um, you, you don't see... Why? The, the, because of what's happened since, for heaven's sake. The, you know, he's a, he's a prime minister that you, you cannot trust. He's a, he's a known liar. His apology last night was absolutely pitiful. He was reading it from a piece of paper like that. If you are sincere and honest in your apology, you don't need a piece of paper. You, you talk straight to the people. Uh, it's just outrageous. So the fish rots from the head down, and he is at the head. And to hide behind Ukraine's skirts, to have a yellow and blue apron of his mum that he's hiding behind, to use Ukraine as a political um, me means of saving his own skin is despicable. Just as despicable is the fact that hundreds of thousands of people are mourning people that are mourning the you know people that they've lost during the pandemic following all the rules, couldn't say farewell to them, couldn't um, hold their hands as they were dying, and Boris is partying. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. This is only one party. He wasn't partying. It's a he one wasn't pa partying. He, he was presented uh, with a cake That's, as a... Support. Oh, for heaven's sake. That's, you know, this, this is... The, the, it's, it's interesting, I think, how the first party that he's going to be um, penalised for is a kind of soft one. It's his birthday. You think, mm, OK, well, maybe, you know, ambushed with a cake, for heaven's sake. But there will the be others. didn't even come out of the damn Tupperware. Well, there were, there were, there were, there, there will be others. There will be others. Well, we'll and see. Tom Bauer. Just, just, excuse me, can you just say, can we just put up the picture of the Queen sitting on her own at the funeral of her husband? The we, morning after we all, the party, we all remember. where they came with wheelie, wheelie, um, uh, don't we all remember that? Full of, we do. Full of wine. But, but Tom Bell, I don't think any of us sitting here defend these parties going on at number 10 Downing Street. But perhaps we can look at the bigger picture, Tom. Well, I agree uh, that what he's done is despicable and he behaved very badly. And in normal conditions, he would be forced to resign because he lied. However, we're not in normal times. The Tory party does not have an alternative to Boris Johnson at the moment, and a leadership contest will be a disaster for Britain. And whatever one thinks about it, it is it's true that Britain is in, and Boris in particular, is in a unique position vis-a-vis -vis the war in Ukraine, which has got enormous ramifications for our lives. Germany is divided, France is rotten, the EU led by uh, van der Leyen is a disgrace. She was the worst defence minister in German history. And Biden is, uh, as we know, a bit doolally. So Boris, <laughs> thanks to Ben Wallace, has done an amazing job yeah. of supporting the Ukrainian uh, defence and prime minister, and they've acknowledged that. Now, I, mean, Nina, I agree. In normal times, he should go. But Nina, we're not what in would normal you say times. To Vladimir Zelensky. 
if, not, if, if Boris was forced out of office. This is a man fighting a war. He would be absolutely destroyed. He views he would, Boris as his biggest ally and most not, important ally. Putin thinks Boris is his biggest ally. Who do you think what? helped to get Boris into, in, into power and Brexit done? Oh, Putin, Dini, you're not going to spread that Putin, conspiracy Putin, theory here. Putin despises Boris. He thinks he's, he's a useful idiot. I mean, the, 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 you know, and because ha Boris has helped to divide Europe. And if you've seen Boris at NATO, he's like Billy No Mate. So he is creating division. Here's a man who's creating Well, that division. was also completely untrue, you think you know, I have to pick you up on that, because if you looked at the footage in full, actually, who was the first person that Biden went to speak to, that Macron went to speak to, that Stoltenberg went to speak to? It and, was Boris Johnson. And then, so you've and bought then, into and the mainstream he, media that took that clip out of context. I'll have to play you the whole thing afterwards, because I did then, a whole segment on it, then, just to point. They line. all despise him, but Biden finds him useful. So, so you can't go further than that. Do you think that if Boris Johnson was run over by a bus tomorrow, it would make the slightest bit of difference to the outcome of the war in Ukraine? Well, let's no. put that question to Colvier, who knows Boris very well. I think it would play quite a bit of difference in terms of the unity between all the coalition countries and the discussions happening. As Dan pointed out, uh, and as Tom has quite rightly said, there are huge challenges in the major allies and their positioning on Ukraine. And Boris has been absolutely clear, driving them forward for support of Ukraine, uh, speaking not just to President Zelensky, but clearly to the other world leaders about the positions that need to be taken. And I think his... His style, his approach, his ability to convince people on the big issues, the things that matter, uh, has, is what's coming to the fore in this war. Now, let's be, I, I, again, I'm absolutely clear. I know what he has done was wrong, uh, and nobody will apologise more for him than he himself has done in terms of what's happened. But you need, he is a unique politician through his entire career. I think whatever criticisms people want to throw at him, you don't become a two-term mayor of London, you don't win uh, the late, uh, Conservative Party leadership, and you don't bring a landslide Conservative majority that only was then previously achieved by Margaret Thatcher in 1987. If there is not something about you unique and special as a politician. This man is a unique politician. He won't always be, uh, you know, the flavor of the month for a lot of people because he's different. He's not a mm. gray man in a suit that, uh, you know, presents himself as every other yeah. politician does. Well, he look does what Ben Houchin says. Look what Ben Houchin says. He says, if Boris Johnson goes, the levelling up project is over. Tom Barrow, I wanted to come back to you and ask you about uh, Boris's wife, Carrie Johnson, who has, of course, received one of these fixed penalty notices too. And a lot of folk behind the scenes, Tom, at number 10 report to me real displeasure in Carrie's role in this whole thing. The fact that she was hosting parties at the flat at number 11. Boris himself doesn't even really like to party. It's not something he really enjoys. Do you think any of that criticism is fair? I think it's very fair. And I think recently the photographs of Carrie in Windsor and at the uh, game park were most unacceptable. She shouldn't be appearing in uh, those sort of poses. She should be in absolute perda. But can I say one more thing about Carrie and all this? She, of course, has a lot to blame and for all the parties and the problems in Downing Street. But we've got to put one thing in perspective about this whole crisis, and that is that Tony Blair lied completely about the war, the reasons to go for war in Iraq. And hundreds of thousands of people died because of Tony Blair's lies. And that did not happen with Partygate. Partygate was unfortunate, it was terrible, he didn't tell the truth, Boris, but it's not on the same how level as Tony Blair's lies. How ridiculous. Small fry compared to Blair. This is a small fry compared to Blair. To Blair. Wait, yes, Tom, you make your point and then Nina comes. How ridiculous to equate Partygate to the Iraq war. This is absolute nonsense. The, the Partygate goes to the heart of who Boris Johnson is and who we are and who we are as a nation and what standards we are. He has dragged the standards of public life down into the gutter. And there's no and there's no denying that. And he, he, you, you called him a, you, a, a unique politician. He's unique in that he has not a smidgen of morals, not a smidgen. At least, you know, some people have some. And it's, he is just not good enough. He's not good enough for this country. And, and I, you, you, you Tom, said, let, let Tom you said, respond. OK. 
Well, I think I think that you've always been probably against Boris. And I remember that Tony Blair was also questioned by the police at the end of his 10 years about cash for peerages. And that was the first time the police had ever been inside Downing but Street. saying Tony to Blair is wrong a, a doesn't make minister. Boris right. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. And that was the first time the police had been inside Downing Street to interview a prime minister for a major, major criminal offence, which is not the same as Partygate. So you've got to put it in perspective. He's done wrong. But if you are a conservative and do not want, as an alternative government, uh, Starmer, Davy, and Sturgeon as a sort of coalition, as an alternative to the conservatives, you're going to have to just hold your nose and hope that Boris doesn't lie again and that he gets us through this amazingly difficult period. And if I can say so, one so thing, Dan, which I think the is the very important Tory party cannot Boris come up with a successor. He's They've had 11 years in power, and they have no, no one that they can put forward. It's outrageous. And also, you don't see France suddenly um, saying we're going to call off our general election because there's a war in Ukraine. They are moving forward. That's a democratic process. Absolutely. And they have their and have a democratic Nina, process by here. the way, I just want to show you, by the way, uh, the full footage, if we can run it, from that NATO summit with Boris Johnson, because I think it's really important. Look, you'll see there, Nina, and I'll get you to respond, but he was greeted first, Boris. So what do you mean he had no mates? That, that, is, that is an initial greeting. Of course, everybody's going to get each other, but as the, as the day went on, you could see that he was being just separated from but everybody. They're all over him. He was to, no, this is greeting. They're all over him. When you say He's hardly hello, missed a note, when mate. you say not at that moment, when you greet someone, of course you say hello to them. Of course you greet. But it, as the day went on, all the footage. He, he, he was standing there, looking like this, looking like this, and he, there was nobody Biden there. Biden walks in, immediately goes to they speak to Boris. Despise so him. look, I'm just saying. I think the way. I'm not blaming you, Nina. I think it's the way the mainstream media edited that footage. No. Was no, severely no, misleading, they him. and I just want to call out that misinformation because you've seen the footage there. They, when you say, it doesn't matter who you are. When you first greet someone, you have to greet them. You have to say hello. And of course, that of course you've got to discuss things with them. But generally, when people were walking about and and not actually discussing things, he was on his own. All right. Well, I just think to try and say at the moment that Boris is not being incredibly impressive on the world stage. Uh, no, he's not. Is, 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 is damn right wrong. But a fascinating debate. I love having it. The broadcaster and author, Nina Mishkoff. Thank you, too, to Boris Johnson's former advisor, Colvert Ranger, and the PM's biographer, who knows him very, very well, Tom Bowers.